This meatloaf recipe with a sweet and tangy glaze is a gourmet meal when properly prepared. In this video, I'll show you how to prevent the meat from drying out and falling apart. Before you get started, make sure to preheat the oven to 350 degrees so it's nice and hot when you're ready to use it. The secret to a moist and tender meatloaf is to add a panade. It's just a simple mixture of breadcrumbs and a liquid like a broth or milk to create a starchy paste. What I'm going to use is two large eggs, add that into a medium bowl, a half a cup of unsalted chicken broth, you could also use stock or beef stock or beef broth as well. Whisk this to combine. The proteins in the egg whites are also going to help set the meatloaf structure. This looks good. The breadcrumbs I like to use are a Japanese style called panko. They're much more coarse and porous, which is going to give you a softer texture. You could also use Italian breadcrumbs, but it's gonna be a little bit more dense. Add one cup. The goal here is to allow the starches in the breadcrumbs to absorb all that liquid. And when it cooks, it's going to create this gel that prevents the proteins from packing too tightly together so that you have a nice and tender slice. We're just going to let this sit while we prepare the vegetables. Ground beef can be pretty bland on its own. To enhance its flavor, I'm going to add some freshly chopped vegetables. I have some cloves of garlic. Just cut off each end, give it a smash peel off the skin. Use the fanning motion to finely mince. You'll notice the aroma is getting much more strong and pungent. Don't worry, this will mellow out when we cook it on the stovetop. We need one tablespoon. Cut off both ends of the onion, leaving the root side intact so it doesn't fall apart. Cut it in half lengthwise. Peel off the skin. Cut slices lengthwise about an eighth inch thick. Cut eighth inch thick slices down, then turn and mince. As the onions saute, they're going to bring out this natural sweetness. Make sure this is finely diced. We need three quarter cup. Cut off both ends of the celery. Cut into about three inch long sections and then slice into really thin pieces, about an eighth inch thick. Turn and stack into a pile, then chop into very fine pieces. This is going to add a nice texture contrast. Finally chop it a few more times. We need a half cup. Heat a medium skillet over medium heat. Once hot, add one tablespoon of olive oil. Add one tablespoon minced garlic and saute until fragrant, about 30 seconds. Add three quarter cup of finely minced onions and a half a cup of finely chopped celery. Saute until tender and the moisture is released and evaporated. About six to eight minutes. Sauteing the vegetables is going to release the moisture from the cell walls, which will eventually evaporate. This will prevent the meatloaf from getting too watery. Over time, the sugars come to the surface and start to brown, giving a nice delicate sweet taste to the meatloaf. This looks good. I'm going to add it to a plate. Spread it into a single layer. Transfer this to the refrigerator for about five minutes to cool down. We don't want to add hot ingredients to the raw meat. Mm, I like to add some fresh herbs to the mixture. For the parsley, use the blade of the knife and just trim off the leaves. I used to do this in culinary school to make prep a lot quicker. <laughs> If there's any large stems left, just separate them from the leaves. Use the fanning motion to chop into very fine pieces. We want little specks of green in the meatloaf, not big chunks. <laughs> just run the knife back and forth. Make sure to save some for garnish later too for a pop of color. We need one tablespoon. For the thyme, just pull off the leaves from the woody stem. Grab the top and pull the leaves down in the opposite direction. You can also use dried thyme. However, it's much more concentrated in flavor, so use about half as much. Gather it into a pile and then finely chop. We need half teaspoon. 
For the most juicy and flavorful slices, I'm going to use 85% lean ground beef. You could go down to 80% or up to 90. However, anything higher than that is just going to be a little bit too chewy. I have two pounds here. Add one cup of finely grated Parmesan cheese. Add the panade, the cooled vegetables, two tablespoons of tomato paste, one tablespoon of chopped parsley, two teaspoons of soy sauce, one and a half teaspoons of Worcester sauce, one teaspoon of sweet paprika, one teaspoon of kosher salt, a half teaspoon of black pepper, and a half teaspoon of chopped thyme. Now it's time for the fun part. You're gonna use your hands to mix everything together. I find that this is the best way to actually feel if everything is incorporated. Gently mix for about one minute. You don't want to overmix the ingredients because the meat is going to get really tough and rubbery. This looks good. I have a nine by five inch loaf pan. Grease it with some olive oil on the bottom and on the sides. This is going to prevent the meat from sticking. Add the meatloaf mixture to the pan and make sure it's pressed down on the bottom and on the sides. Now use your fingertips to make a domed shape in the center. Bake until the internal temperature reaches 135 to 140 degrees, about 45 to 55 minutes. While the meatloaf is in the oven, I'm going to make a sweet and tangy glaze. Add one third cup of maple syrup or honey. This is the real stuff, not the high fructose corn syrup. <laughs> a quarter cup of tomato paste. This is going to help it stick to the surface. One tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. A half teaspoon of Worcester sauce. These two are going to add tanginess. A half teaspoon of kosher salt. And a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. Just whisk it all together. I've heard from many home cooks that they like to double the sauce recipe so that they have extra to serve on the side. I don't blame them. <laughs> this has a nice barbecue sauce consistency and it's gonna stick nicely to the meat. Now set this aside. Remove the meatloaf from the oven and carefully drain off excess juices from the bottom of the pan. Increase the oven temperature to 500 degrees. Wow, this smells amazing. The surface is nice and golden brown, but to take it to the next level, we're gonna add the glaze. Use a brush or a spoon to put the glaze on top. We're actually going to do this process three times and let it cook about three minutes between each phase. This is going to allow the hot temperature in the oven to evaporate some of the moisture in the sauce and create this crust on top. Bake for three minutes. Brush a second layer of glaze, then bake for three minutes. Brush a third and final layer, then bake until the sauce is lightly browned and bubbly, about three to five minutes. Wow, this looks incredible. The crust has set on top and it's nice and glossy. As much as you wanna dig in right now, make sure to let it sit for at least 15 minutes to cool to make it easier to slice. I'll be back for you soon. The meatloaf has cooled down. Let's remove it from the pan. Use your spatula just to release the edges. Tilt the pan slightly and then use your hands to just lift it out of the pan. I'm going to use my carving knife to cut one inch thick pieces. I find it easier to reheat when they're already pre-sliced. Okay, it's ready to serve up. Now this looks amazing. We just turned some boring ground beef into a dish that your family is gonna absolutely love. Right before serving, I like to sprinkle on some freshly chopped parsley. And then don't forget to serve some extra sauce on the side. To make this a complete meal, I would serve this with my homemade mashed potatoes right here. It's the perfect pairing. I hope you enjoyed learning the science behind meatloaf. And if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. It means a lot when you do. See you in the next video. It's a little bit more parsley. <laughs>